I'd spent the last few nights in the Golf View Hotel, admiring the views of Murray Golf Club. It was time to take that short walk up the street and make my way to the first tee of this classic links designed by none other than old Tom Morris. Right, welcome back then to what is episode three and we're at Murray Golf Club and you've seen a real montage of, whole, of me hitting uh, a number of shots in the rain so far. This is the first time the rain has stopped, the waterproofs are off. We set up the tripod behind us to get a nice shot of me and a tee shot in that lighthouse in the backdrop, which was fantastic. Then if you look down that way, well I didn't realise we were 30 yards away, which is where the camera was set up. This is probably the best hole we've played so far, certainly the toughest. Stroke index one. Two bunkers left, I can see two bunkers shorter right. And honestly, I've just hit an absolute belting drive off the left bunkers with a bit of cut. It's stroke one, it's four, three, five from the yellows, an amazing hole. What you've seen so far is a proper classic links sort of terrain course. Reverted to Tom Morris design, which I always love playing an old Tom Morris course. I've just teed off on uh, the ninth, and what you'll see is uh, a number of lights that carry on in the straight line. If you turn around this way, yeah, this way, we've got one there, another straight line of lights. And what they are is basically highlighting where the runway is, because honestly, there's planes that just drop in on you. Harrier jump jets is the, I think that's what they're called anyway, or they were uh, many years ago. They're just literally landing horrendously loud on top of your head almost. You can probably hear them now in the backdrop. Well, I struggled on this hole on nine into the bunker off the tee and plugged as you've seen pop one up and then again wrong club selection there from that rough landed short but uh, one question I want to answer is this for the last uh, leading up to our visit I was calling this place or the area Moray Speyside and then when I got here everyone's calling it Murray and I was where the hell's Murray because you spell this thing M-O-R-A-Y and that's Moray in my book and if that's not Moray why is Murray Field Murray Field and not Moray Field I'm confused. Right, do you know what? That wasn't a bad bogey in the end. A uh, good little chip up and down, little nine iron bump and run worked out quite well. The camera's gone back on for 10 because it's a very similar hole to what we've played down nine, really, all about being relatively tight. Only 252 yards. I think it was 278 coming down nine. So clearly, more about position than anything else. I've gone five wood. I don't even know whether this is too big, to be honest with you. But we're a decent one, even though we found the bunker, so we'll go a little bit wider this time. Yeah, and it stays a bit wider. Sit down. Ah, it's bouncing away there. Shouldn't be too bad in the first cut and a good angle in, but two back-to-back -back par fours. Really pretty, would be easy on the eye if we had a bit of colour in the heather. A bit late in the year now for that, but you can see clearly that would give a lot more definition to both those two par fours. I mentioned in the introduction that this was a classic Lynx. It is in fact everything a Lynx course should be. Rolling, undulating, 
heather and gorse lined fairways, revetted bunkers, firm and fast greens, and that sense of history that cannot be manufactured. Well, first thing we've got to say is the sun's come out. How much nicer is golf in the sun? I didn't do a lot of talking around that front nine simply because we couldn't do it. It was absolutely oh, horrible, but the sun's coming. Anyway, super little hole of 12. Little sweeping uh, dog leg, right to left. Uh, we've got good position off the tee. I'm in a bit of a divot there on the back end of one, but flag tucked right at the very back and a uh, big slope on the front half of the green. Let's see if we can get one. Do the drive justice. Is the yardage right? It's a bit left. See it coming down now, kick off. Oh, and it has. Come on, come back down, come back down. Oh, do you know what? I got a bit lucky again there in that I played it a little bit long and left, but it cambered off the back and, uh, oh, do you know what? I bet from here anyway, it looks about eight to 10 foot away. Now let's not forget this series is all about whiskey and golf and I will of course be tasting whiskey post round. Well actually it was pre-round, it was last night that it was filmed. I've got three whiskies that I taste, they're all really interesting and they will be at the end of this video and I'll give you my opinion and again three different Speyside malts. Well do you know what I was, thought was on for a monster birdie there, that was a huge putt but the thing that you'll probably notice throughout the whole video is a lighthouse that's uh, quite prominent. And you see, oh, we've tried to put it on quite a few of the backdrops, and you know what, it's got, it's obviously got that Ailsa look to it in terms of Turnberry, uh, the Turnberry Lighthouse. And the course itself has got similarities to the Robert the Bruce course, kind of flat in many places, a lot of gorse lined fairways, and I said earlier to the camera woman, even sort of four or five holes in, that it's got that similar sort of lay of the land of the Robert the Bruce course, and then that uh, lighthouse in the backdrop as well. Looks familiar. Not only has the sun come out, we're on the, Mo the Murray Firth. I nearly said the Murray Firth again there. Whatever you call it, it doesn't half look good, does it? I referenced earlier the sort of uh, the mountains you see on the backdrop there. Over the other side is Dornock, and uh, if you can just sweep around the back here, Trace, you'll just see another. If you come around the back, you'll see another really sort of well, what looks to be very tight driving hole in terms of uh, gorse down the left. So we'll be trying to set this one out down that right hand side. We did it on the last door, we could do with it again. Ah, it's not coming back as much. Keep moving. Keep moving. Ah, it's not too bad. A little bit too cautious, but yeah, what a location that is for a tee box. I don't know whether that's on the new course over there. There's another tee box literally right on the beach. It's just over the other side again. So uh, two courses here. We're playing the old as a new course as well, which again, I'm not really sure sort of how it's, uh, where the layout is. But yeah, really nice. And that sun's shining. Oh, I've got to say, you know, that was absolutely exhilarating. What you're watching right now is uh, two planes coming right over. I was waiting to play a seven iron in and all of a sudden that kind of froze the noise off the two of them. Almost frightened me to death really. I didn't want it to golf ball. Anyway, next all we've played is, I uh, love this, you know I love a view of the sea and that kind of green that sits on the horizon there. That's the nicest green we've played into today, looks absolutely superb. And you get a ball in there and... Ah, oh, I've leaked it. Leaked it and a big bunker weights. Oh, leaked and long, went over the bunker. Well, the hole's on the uh, back nine. I don't know whether, where it was from, uh, but certainly 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I'm not sure whether it's 16 or 17, but they've been um, really, I think, tough, I would say, and, and tight. Gorse is definitely a major defence, as are these bunkers as well. We've played it with no breeze whatsoever, yet it's been a bit miserable and the rain has played a part, but no wind. And obviously that'll be a key feature on here, make things a whole lot tougher. The greens have been good. This one in particular, again, was a uh, highlight in terms of the contours in the green, which you might be able to see in this light. It's a little bit dull. 
we've got almost a basin gathering this if we can get one some I think almost right all left and it'll feed down to it let's just concentrate on getting it out first then is that too much spin spin oh it stayed on the brow there's a real slope there which I think we've got a lot of dew on the gr on the grass and uh, I really thought that that was just going to roll right back down to the hole but anyway we'll take that see if we can make that and uh, it'll be another up and down save because uh, I've not been as good in terms of green and regulation today Right, another episode draws to a conclusion and uh, a great visit again to Murray Golf Club. Uh, pretty spectacular views on that back nine, love the tee positions. Um, like I said, on those closing holes in particular on the uh, waterfront, really nice indeed. It's, um, we've got 18 to go and I'll uh, get a drive away quickly because that rain's coming back and apologies that the sun wasn't shining and we couldn't show you this off in all its glory. And don't forget, we've got some whiskey tasting to finish up in that clubhouse that we can see or you might be able to see it's just tucked away it's a little bit left to right this so we're going to go at the clubhouse or sorry the pro shop and see if we can just get a little slidey one around the corner oh we called it and doesn't happen too often does it that's pretty much uh position eight to finish i think Right, so to continue with our theme of whiskey tasting, we ain't going to do no different today at Moray Golf Club, but uh, this time we've gone for three different, and they're quite special uh, whiskies, to be honest with you, all are very much on theme, not just with the Speyside malts, but in terms of who they are named after, well, certainly the first one. And it's a bottle that has been uh, Moray Golf Club have bought in relation to old Tom Morris's 200th anniversary of his birth, which was this year, as you will know. That's one we'll start with. Then we've got something called Tam D, and Tam D has a relationship with uh, Mori Golf Club in that a past captain was a previous owner of Tam D. I think that dates back to 1913 and 1915 he was captain of this club. And the final whiskey that I'm going to taste is Abalawa. I know very little about any of them in, supposed to what, in, in terms of what they're supposed to taste like. But we'll start off with old Tom Morris. I'm really hoping I do like this one because, as you know, I'm a massive fan of his. And we've just played one of his designs. So... Old Tom, this one's for you. I'll go back to the whiskey tasting we did earlier on today. It's kind of, it's, it's an okay kind of single malt. It's not um, a little bit more harsh than I'd like. I'd like something just a little bit softer than that, but not bad old Tom to be uh, have that bottle named after you. The next one, we'll move on to is this Tam D which uh, that real interesting story and relationship with Moray Golf Club a past captain being a previous owner and I think if I remember rightly what I've just read he designed the distillery which again I've no idea where that is but it's somewhere on Speyside if you want to see the view I'm looking at right now it's incredible but we're here for the whiskey so here we go Tam D Oh, now, now that's more my cup of tea. I always use this phrase, my cup of tea, and I'm drinking whiskey, so uh, yeah, not quite right, but that is a lot softer. I don't know, again, you know I'm no expert on this thing, but it's a little bit of fruit in there. It just tastes, like I said, just an all round the more softer drink, less harsh on the, uh, on the throat, and a bit smoother in terms of the way it goes down. So that's a massive thumbs up. I like Tan D. And last one, Abalawa which is a whiskey that uh, you may have heard of, I've also heard of, never tasted before. So our final one of the day. I've got to drink the rest of these three and it uh, should be a, an interesting evening.
Oh, that's quite nice as well. Do you know what's interesting about whiskey is that, uh, that there's often, I mean, 20 years ago, I was of the opinion whiskey was whiskey. And I suppose the only thing I'd ever drank at that stage was Bell's. It was harsh, I hated it. And then you try all these different types and there are so many sort of variations and differences in terms of the palate, it's massive. And again, to be fair, Abalawa again is really, really nice. I really enjoyed that. Ah, it's a real tough one, if I had to pick one, I'm really split between the sort of Tam D and our Abalawa. Unfortunately, old Tom, you were a great ball maker, a great uh, keeper of greens and uh, a great designer of golf courses, a great player. But in terms of whiskey, that's not my favorite. I would definitely be choose between one of them two. I think I'd probably be swayed back to that Tam D if I had to pick any. Anyway, I'm gonna carry on looking at this view, finish off these whiskies. I'll wash it down with a bit of Guinness as well. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this episode and uh, Mori Golf Club. And I'll see you very, very soon for our fourth and final episode. Thanks for watching.